Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. You know, one of you asked a question in the comments recently, and the question was a very simple and fair and reasonable one. It was, did you ever review Warner's Bernstein box, his recordings made with the Orchestre Nationale de France? And I said, I don't know. I don't remember, actually. And I went and looked. I thought we'd talked about it. I'd planned to, but I didn't. I didn't review it on Classics Today, and I didn't review it at all. And I have it sitting right here. And the performances are marvelous. It's a wonderful, wonderful set. It's only seven CDs, which is kind of actually nice, you know, when you have these mega boxes. You know, you get seven CDs of prime, interesting Bernstein. All of it done supremely well. It's all really good stuff. And it's fun to listen to, and I'm just going to go through it so I can say that I did it. I just can't believe it. You know, it's, it's so much stuff coming out, so many things to talk about, and it's, it's impossible. It's absolutely impossible. These are um, original jackets, so we'll, we'll have a look at the original jackets, and we'll go through this. And there's some really juicy special stuff in here, some fun extra material that I need to tell you about. So first, what did we get? Well, the Symphony Fantastique. Now, Bernstein was a great Berlioz conductor. He really was. He got the music's weirdness, its quirkiness, its eruptive passion, its, its, its kookiness. He just understood it. He made three recordings of the Symphony Fantastique, at least. Um, two of them were on Sony, and this one, and they're all great. They're all just terrific. I, I love his way with this piece. I really do. He doesn't work the finale up to the same like hot and heavy, steamy insanity that people like Charles Munch does, but the passion is there, the color is there. He just revels in the orchestration. He's got the, the orchestra here in France playing terrifically, and it's just it's just wonderful. And there is more. There is more Berlioz where that came from because there is also Waha Harold in Italy which he also does equally well. And this is with uh, Donald, Donald McGinnis, viola, and the Orchestra Nacional de France. This is as good as any Harold in Italy out there. They're really true. There's a lot of good Harold, Harolds in Italy's. Harold had a very good, good trip in Italy. He really did. It, things went well in Italy for Harold. And they go very, very well here. So these are great. And, you know, these are two works that are not usually, well, the Symphony Fantastique Bernstein has something of a reputation with and, you know, he did a fabulous Berlioz Requiem on Sony. One, it's the only one, along with Munch, that I would completely, totally recommend. Well, maybe Colin Davis, too. But, you know, there aren't many recordings of that. But this is a really wonderful Herald in Italy. And so we're off to the races with two terrific recordings. Next, oh, this was a classic. Mio! A Mio disc! All Mio! Yes! Yes, la création du monde, le bœuf sur le toit, which I love. The Soda do Brasil, the four dances. Um, I, and it's just a wonderful little disc. It's short. It's 43 minutes and 55 seconds. I always thought it was too short. He should have done more. But for what he does, it's terrific. Now, this creation of the world is not as biting and down and dirty jazz-wise as the famous, you know, Alexis Weissenberg one with the court vial, the Kleine Dreigroschen Musik on Nonsuch. That's the best ever création du monde. But, um, but it's very good. I mean, it really is. It's very, very good. And the other pieces are just wonderful. I love Le Boeuf sur le Toit. You know, John Pororotu, ba da 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 I should have got my maracas out. I could have had such a good time in this video except that you would have turned it off in horror. So what the heck? But yes, another wonderful disc and unusual repertoire. So that's great. You know, one of the nice things about these recordings is that Bernstein did some things he didn't do 150 times elsewhere. Well, maybe only 120 times elsewhere. Next, the Schumann Cello Concerto and Bloch's Shalomo with Rostropovich. Now, some people, when this came out, I shall never forget, thought that the Shalomo was a little bit hot and heavy. I mean, the Schumann was Schumann, you know, it was very, very well done. But 
you know, the Bluch was, you know, over emotional because Rostropovich is there slobbering all over it and Bernstein is panting and heaving. Then he did it with Misha Maisky. And this sounds positively classical in comparison. It's a terrific performance of Shlomo, which is a great work. Bluch's orchestral music is really all very good. And it gets no credit. It gets no love from anybody. And I don't understand it. I truly don't understand it because it is marvelous. I can't think of the last time I heard Shlomo done live. And it's, it's a cello concerto. I mean, why not? It's just fantastic. So, and Rostropovich, you know, is, is superb and it's, it's wonderful. So that's a classic. Then we get Rachmaninoff III with Alexis Weissenberg. It's another performance people don't think about, but it's very, very good. It's slowish. It really is. But, you know, Weissenberg, who most people say was sort of a butcher at the keyboard, it was like cold as ice and slashing and burning and hacking, and, but technically very, very accomplished. He was a very good Rachmaninoff pianist. You may recall he did all the preludes for RCA, and they're marvelous. And he did the two sonatas for Deutsche Grammophon, and those are marvelous. And this, he did the second piano concerto with Karyon, and it's horrible, but it's Karyon's fault. Well, Bernstein is not at fault, not at all. Uh, you have a wonderful accompaniment by Bernstein, but the nice thing about Weissenberg is that even though the, the tempi are somewhat leisurely, the rhythm is really incisive, and his somewhat hard and flinty tone really suits the music well. It cuts through the tendency of Rachmaninoff to sound kind of syrupy, you know what I mean? So yes, it's on the, on the leisurely side, but it's not slobbering and syrupy leisurely. It's, it's actually very exciting and rather pinpoint and precise. I like it. So that's great. But the other thing that's on here that's really fun is that he did a, he did a couple of concerts while he was there. And among them was a Ravel concert. Now, the stuff he played in some of that Ravel concert, three pieces anyway, Alborada, La Valls, and Bolero, were recorded for Sony. But the actual concert was also recorded, and here it is. It's on here. And you get rehearsals. Rehearsals of Alborada del Gracioso, Scheherazade with Marilyn Horn, no, yet no less, and she's in fabulous voice. And you get the Concerto in G with Bernstein at the piano, which he recorded three times, or there are three recordings available. And, and um, the first one is sort of the liveliest in some ways, technically the best, but this may be the best interpretation. And Laval's, and you get to hear the rehearsals. And the rehearsals are very, very interesting. Because you realize, of course, what I've always maintained, which, which is that Bernstein was never this sort of wanton, over-emoting slob. He was exciting as hell. He was. And he was very passionate and intense. All true. But he was the most detailed exponent of the score that you will ever meet. He knew every single note. And whether he did it or not, he may have had his reasons. But most of the time, he did. And I was particularly interested listening to the rehearsal of, well, two of them, of the Alborada, where he really tells the bassoon solo in the central section. He gets him to sing the part wonderfully. And Bernstein sings. And if you think my singing is bad, oh, thank God for Leonard Bernstein. And then in La Valse, what's so fascinating about it is that, you know, he so understands what La Valse is. I mean, I don't mean, you know, in an aesthetic weird sense. I mean, technically what it is, because he, what he's emphasizing in the brief rehearsal excerpt, it's like eight minutes of rehearsals from the middle. It ends just when the big explosion happens, heading toward the end, is the, the contrast between this sort of slushy, murky undertow that the music emerges from and the brilliant, hard, rhythmic, glittering, you know, waltz, waltz music that, you know, happens at the climaxes, happens above, you know, mezzo forte. And, and he gets a performance out of the orchestra with this tremendous dynamic range. And it's exactly what Ravel wanted. And he's very, 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 very careful to get all the tempo changes and gear shifts right. And it's just terrific. It's a wonderful Lavals, which you can hear on Sony in a studio recording, or 
you have two discs here. We have one which has El Barada, Al, the Alborada and Scheherazade and the Piano Concerto and Tsigana with Boris Belkin. Ugh, ugh. I mean, it's fine. Probably the most horrible piece of music. But it's on here, and they do it. Who cares? And then on this disc, you get Lavals and Bolero. These are live recordings, but they sound very, very good. And the orchestra, you know, yes, there are a couple little, you know, things that happen in live performance, but it's never serious. And then you also get Bernstein conducting On the Waterfront and the symphonic dances from West Side Story. Very, very well done in both cases. So, I mean, you know, that's a real bonus because those were never released commercially, and now they are. And it's all at a very reasonable price for these seven discs. And, you know, Bernstein is as interesting to hear rehearsing as he is conducting. I mean, he's one of the very few conductors about whom that could be said. Because, you know, even in French, which is, you know, I understand it, I understood, I understand it, which I understood perfectly well because, I, you know, he stuck to the words he knew, <laughs> basically. And, uh, oh, my. It's a wonderful experience. So I do very strongly recommend, if you didn't get this yet, make sure you do. You have to round out your Bernstein collection with some of his very, very best work. And it wasn't for Deutsche Gramophone, and it wasn't for Sony. It was right here on Warner. It was on EMI. So that was, you know, it's one of those little, little, little niches of his repertoire. And how happy I am to have it. So keep on listening, folks. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care.